your body. He will bend down and she will bend down. And they will take sand. Yes. And they hang like this. Yes. I think British people are too civilized. We are not have to fight. So the challenger will take sand like this and he will extend it to you. It is a challenge. And in our language we say our paila. Our paila. Which means are you accepting the challenge? And when you accept the challenge, you do not like Amen. 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 I need to tell you, my, my dear sister, 
that I had not planned to wear this. My God. I had one of my lovely African attires, you know, the green and orange one. You know, it was hanging there with the silver. You know, it is uh, uh, Minister Diola in my closet. It was the green, orange, with silver here. That's the one I was going to wear today. I've taken it out because the Lord has told me and instructed me on many occasions. He says, dress like an African. Yes. He's told me for the last 20 years, he says, I want you to dress like an African and represent yourself, although you are a kingdom citizen first and foremost, but also dress as an African because God said he was going to, as far back as 20 years ago, raise up a generation of African ministers who he would send out to the nation for this season, passing a baton of apostolic and prophetic grace that Africans will begin to go out into the nations, hallelujah. And so he said I should represent myself as an African because I grew up in Canada and in the US, so it's not always immediately evident that I am an African. And God said he's using a certain generation to begin to change the mindsets and the stereotypes about Africa. Yes. Because Africa is not a third world. Africa is not a place of darkness. God has a specific redemptive grace that is placed upon Africans. And God is beginning to line things up. Every nation has a redemptive grace. Every people have a redemptive grace. Every gender has a redemptive grace. As women, we have a redemptive grace. Because we are women, we are men with wombs. A womb of man. A man with a womb. And there is a redemptive grace that is upon you. Because the womb is a place of increase. The womb is a place of enlargement. The womb is a place of multiplication. It's a place of warmth. It's a place of nurturing. When you put a seed in a womb, that seed has no choice but to grow. It cannot help but grow. The DNA of the womb is to grow. And the DNA of a woman is to grow that thing. So whatever seed you receive in your spiritual and natural womb, you will grow it inevitably. Because the DNA a woman is the redemptive grace of growth and multiplication. Oh and that is why you can give a woman 10 pounds and she will buy Sarah's grocery with 10 pounds. And if you give man 10 pounds, he comes back with one loaf. That is why a man will not be able to raise up even one child by himself. He will eat all food by himself. The DNA of multiplication is not in him. But the woman will take
the many ways that he speaks through his word, through creation, through other people. Hallelujah. You will not be derailed by false voice. You will not be taken out by counterfeit voice. You will not be taken out by the name of the wolf. You will not be taken out by the voice of the enemy in the name of Jesus. You will hear his voice clearly with the gift of discerning of spirit in you. Beginning to come out in you. That you will know that this is the voice of God and this is the voice of the enemy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless God. We bless God. What a privilege to be here. Amen. Hallelujah. We bless God. Thank you so much, Pastor Lola. I bless God for having met her last year where I was ministering somewhere. I can't even remember where it was, but it was somewhere in the UK. Amen. And I met her, Pastor Jennifer, and many other women. Praise the Lord. And uh, I'm so grateful I met her later when she came to South Africa and God connected us in the spirit. Uh, this is a season of divine connection. We speak every divine connection that God released for you before the foundations of the earth. May you recognize your divine connection. May you see your destiny helpers. Your destiny helpers will locate you. They will not sabotage you. We rebuke every Tobiah. We rebuke every Sambiah. You will not hear the voice of Tobiah. You will not hear the voice of destruction. The voice of She's been following on Facebook, yeah. and she was determined to come here yes. today. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. hallelujah. It's a season of going through open doors, yeah. and um, hallelujah. We, we, we are so grateful uh, for everybody who is here. And I, I just hear the Lord, one of the things that the Lord was speaking to me. He said, in this season of open doors, there's an open door for UK that is beginning to open up. And uh, as our, our, our two ladies came in, God showed me that not only are denominational barriers coming down, which is why we have people from the Church of England here today, because God is bringing down those denominational barriers and beginning to bring his people together. But not only are the denominational barriers coming down, but he says even the racial barriers are coming down. I saw the Lord using this ministry to bring down every racial barrier. Because one of the things that the enemy wants to do with this immigrant issue, etc., he's trying to bring in a principality of xenophobia. But God said to tell you, England, to rise up and rebuke every spirit of xenophobia, every spirit of racism in the name of Jesus. It is targeted to try and take England out of redemptive purpose and out of redemptive grace. I'm speaking now as a prophet in the name of Jesus. That part of the assignment against England is to bring in a hatred and a dislike for foreigners, for immigrants out there. Because what the, the demon of, of, of xenophobia and racism is one of the worst demons you will ever deal with. Ask me, I come from South Africa. I come from South Africa. The lack of unity is the key instrument that the enemy will use to bring division, to bring strife, and to take a nation out of its redemptive purpose. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. So you need to rise up against it. I pray that God will raise up women in Nehemiah ministry, in Hebron ministry, to begin to pray against that and to raise up an altar of unity, raise up a standard of oneness, raise up a standard of one language that there will be praying women who will pray that the redemptive purpose of England will not and UK will not be derailed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless God. We bless God. Uh, we're talking about open doors. And God has been speaking to us about open doors. And even as we came here, the Lord was confirming open doors to me, you know. Um, it was interesting as Pastor Lola and I went to run for the elevator. The elevator started to close. And as it started to close, I went like this. And as I went like this, the doors opened again. And I heard the Spirit of the Lord said, that is represents, it's like my hand. He said, there's some doors that have tried to close down on you. But he said, in this season, I am doing this. I am doing this. The enemy tried to close doors of opportunity. 
this, but he said to tell you, I am doing this, and the doors will open. The enemy tried to close doors of, of wealth, but he said to tell you, I am doing this, and the doors that look like they were closing, they will go back. The doors of opportunity are opening in the season. Like was said earlier, there is, it is a season of breakthrough. Yes. That's the thing, the one thing that God spoke to me. In January, as I was sharing with our little assembly, I said, you know, I said, God showed me a picture. And it was a picture of many people. And people were running and they were putting every effort, every human effort. They were sweating. They were putting everything that they knew, every strategy, every effort they put it in. But they were going nowhere because they were on a treadmill. Treadmill, one spot, putting every effort. And God said, tell my people in this season, it is a season of breakout, it is a season of breakthrough, and it is a season of break forth. Break forth. Because after you break out, and after you break through, Perez, then you must break and move forward. You cannot just break out to stand and look cute. You cannot just break out to stand and pose and say, see how cute I am. See my Gucci shoes. You break out and through so that you can break forth. May you break forth in your ministry. May you break forth in every assignment. May you break forth in prayer. May you break forth in worship. May you break forth in every area that God has assigned you to break forth in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so God is, is connecting us to break out, break through, and break forth through open doors. Through open doors. Hallelujah. Let's read our scripture verse, our foundational scripture, Revelations 3, verse 7. Hallelujah. Revelations 3, verse 7. Read there. Let's read it together. Mandoroboshaka. This is our anchor verse. This is our foundational verse. And let's see where the Lord will take us from here. Revelation 3. Say to your neighbor, it's open doors. It's open doors. It's open doors. It's open doors. Open doors. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In our language in Swana, we say Kenako. Kenako means it's time. Can you say Kenako? Kenako. It's time. It's time to go through the open doors. Hallelujah. Are you in Revelation 3? If you are, give me Nigerian amen. 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 In Nigeria, we say amen. <laughs> we have to say it well, well. Amen. 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 Revelation 3, verse 7. Can we read it together? Hallelujah. One, two, three. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that has the key of David. He that opens, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man opens. Can we read that again? He that opens, and no man shuts, and shuts, and no man opens. One more time, I want you to catch that in the spirit. He that opens, and no man shuts, and shuts, and no man opens. Hallelujah. I want you to know doors that have been opened for you. Amen. There are doors that have been opened for you. And in this season, God will reveal them to you. Each and every door, hallelujah, that has been opened. And the problem that many of us have had is that we've been trying to open those doors in our own human strength. And God said to tell you, in this season, you need to chillax. Tell your neighbor, chillax. chillax. Yeah, chillax. It means you chill out and you relax. And then you chillax. Hallelujah. You need to chillax. You've been struggling in your own strength. You've been struggling with your own strategies. You've been struggling in your own thoughts. But God says in this season, he wants you to chillax and begin to allow him. He says, he opens the door that no man can shut. Begin to allow him to shut the doors that no man can open. In this season, may God give you revelation. May God give you understanding about how he will open the doors. Hallelujah. Because those doors, those doors, when God has opened them, I don't care how many demons. I don't care whether he's a major demon. Because we like titles. You know, these days we have major apostles. We have minor apostles. I don't know who's minor and who's major. And after all, even 
mighty powerful, mighty man of God, inviting people to come and see ourselves. How many sicknesses can you heal? I like 
this brother, oh, he's got a six pack. Check out his six pack. Check out his fine, fine look. Yeah, they go shy and praying and fasting for it because I've decided because of the six pack. That is God's will for my, my life. Yeah. And so now you pray. You pray hard and fast for this brother. In five years, the same brother that you've been praying for is giving you fivefold ministry. <laughs> fivefold ministry. Because you never asked God, bother to ask him about his will. You saw six pack and you started praying because of six pack. You never ask God, what does his heart look like? You never ask God, who is the man you've signed for me? You've seen big house. You never ask God, God, this house, you just, I claim it. Now the house is falling apart. The house is full of worms because God has signed you a house in China, which you never actually asked, bothered to ask to say, Lord, where am I supposed to be? What nation am I supposed to be? Yeah. I was sharing 
with Minister Adiola earlier on. I said, I once, years ago, I used to preach a message called Salt or MSG. Are you Salt or MSG? What is MSG? MSG is monosodium glutamate. What is monosodium glutamate? It looks like salt. It tastes like salt. But it's not salt. It's what the Chinese like to put in their food. It's
Uh, we call it Zinglish. Zulu English. Zinglish. He said, Reverend Pearl, are you finished? I said, yes. He went to the button there, to the dashboard. He pressed the button, and the door went, mm.
question that seems to trouble people about women ministers. Yes, mm. come on. He said that. Mm. They it's tried to trap him. For real. Yes. They said, journalists met him in Malawi. They said, evangelist Reinhardt, what do you have to say about this issue of women in ministry? Mm -hmm. I remember how he answered them. Mm. You know he's German. Mm. And this is what he said. He said, my friend, <laughs> my friend, if you were to fall into the water mm -hmm. and you cannot swim, mm. and you were falling in the water and you were shouting and you were drowning <laughs> and screaming, help, 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 he said, now, if a woman was to come to you and hold out stick, and come and help you and say, grab onto the stick. Mm -hmm. Would you refuse her help? help? My God. The man said, of course not. I will take the help. He said, why? He said, because she'll be saving my life. He said, my friend, the gospel is a life-saving gospel.
you know, whatever performances we do. Open doors respond to authority. Open doors respond to sonship. When you know that you're a son of God, it's that open doors respond to your identity. They don't respond to, you know, however cute we look. They don't respond to our hair weaves, ladies. They don't even respond to Maybelline. You can mother that Maybelline on. You can put Maybelline. Second coat is red long. Open doors 
Baby, you can hit door. Oh, shining in the thing, the thing, the thing. Not open door. Sons. God told me this long time ago. He says he gives keys to sons. Oh my God. My God. Because I was asking him for keys. I said, Lord, I want the keys of the kingdom. He said, Hey, are you ready for keys? Are you ready? It's for sons, it's not for small, small baby. I said, What do you mean? He said, Because if you give key to baby, baby will lock door that needs to be opened. And will open door that needs to be locked. So he said, When you are in sonship, I will give you the keys. The key to open doors is in sonship. The key to an open door is in sonship. Supernaturally from this pit. I think if it was you or me, 
she calls us up and she complains. And when we ask her, what have you done? She can't tell us anything. My so for the sake of not losing you in government, because you're going to another government post, we are going to give you the backing, full backing to get this position. Wow. Can I tell you that I was the first appointed registrar in history? Sometimes people may think they're blocking your door, but they're only creating history for you.